Yes, welcome everyone here to the Smash Sports Show right here on Smash FM here on Lockdown Friday here in Melbourne. Of course, uh, let's turn our attention now to cycling in particular. We've been with uh, one of our favourite uh, cycling clubs, and that's the No Part Danong Cycling Club. Of course, we've got four very special guests joining us right now to tell us how it's been like since we last had them on the show back in May last year. Thanks uh, all for you for joining us. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, I will get each of you to introduce yourselves. Cool. So I'm, oh. I'm Ryan and I'm the one of the vice presidents of the Noble Park Dandenong Cycling Club. Uh, I'm a racing member, um, help out with a bit of admin and um, yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm David. I'm a vice president as well and uh, more a track rider. So I'm Kim. I'm also one of the vice presidents of the club and do a bit of social riding and also a bit of um, racing here and, here and there. I'm Chris. I'm um, president and uh, I do a lot of administration and a lot of the social media and trying to keep things um, pulled together over a pretty difficult uh, 18 months for the club. But again, we're very good at persevering. It has been pretty tough 18 months, obviously. Um, I guess since we last had the, um, the club on the show, I think we've been through about four lockdowns now. So how has it been like? Uh, I know that we had that three months in the summer uh, where, or even four months in the summer where we had a bit of freedom. Um, I guess what did you do during the, the, the gaps that we had between lockdowns to, I guess, some sort of cycling throughout those months? Um, yeah, so to answer your question, um, I guess it's been challenging for everyone, but I think uh, considering the circumstances we've had, we've actually dealt with it very well as a club. Um, considering the res resources we have, um, we've been able to do pretty much as much as we possibly can. Um, I know Kim's been doing wind trainer sessions like online. So people have been able to tune in once a week and, and um, you know, join in for some training. Um, you know, everyone's been doing work on the side uh, just to try and, you know, give people some sort of, you know, whether it's communication with the club or some activities to be a part of. So um, we're about to hopefully get our lockdown, um, hopefully in around end of October to early November, which obviously just in time for the, uh, the summer of cycling. Um, any plans at all, um, hopefully from now, from here, on, from here on? Earlier in the year, we raced in the club teams championships on the track um, and we won two gold medals there so we'd be hoping to do that again um, early next year in the track season um, and maybe get a few more teams in there and some new um, riders going on the track so hopefully um, we get some nice weather and can uh, get a few extra riders on track and represent the club. So you just mentioned about that a moment ago, Dave. Um, tell us how did that all go earlier this year? So it was in the team sprint and the team's pursuit. Um, and it was, we had three riders. So we had um, myself, Ryan and um, Callum, who I think was on, on the show last time as well. Um, yeah, and so it was Callum's first track race and I guess our first uh racing the three of us together in a team um so we were just the aim was just to have a bit of fun and and fly the club colors and um yeah we we ended up coming away with two gold which was really good i think it's only pretty much athletics and cycling and probably the only two sports uh um pretty much almost exempt from all the other sports that uh in regards to lockdowns and obviously you'd be able to, you know, obviously ride your bike and all that sort of things. And obviously we've had athletes with the run. Um, I guess, uh, have you, I'm assuming you used to have been doing a lot of riding and all that sort of things during, I guess, the exercise time. It's, that's actually been a bit, a little bit problematic because we can't actually organise um, social rides during the lockdown. So Kim's been doing these ergo, weekly ergo sessions. People can ride individually but we get things called restricted activity um, directions. I think that's the RADs. We get those from Oscycling Victoria. So we have to follow those. And we're waiting 
for the vaccination rate and all that sort of thing to come through from the state government and they take their interpretation. And then we're waiting from, again, going back to Oz Cycling Victoria to give us the go ahead from when the clubs can start doing their activities. I hope that makes sense, but they have to interpret what the um, chief health officer says and the clubs have to follow that. So individually, People have been riding, um, you know, 5, 10, 15 k's uh, limit. But we are really looking forward to um, the limits opening up and we can get on with going back to our weekly uh, social rides. And we're also hoping to have some outdoor ergo sessions organised as well. So just not online sessions that we've been holding, mm. which would be great to meet up, um, new members who want to join up and training sessions for races and joining club activities as well. How has um, the online ergo been going? Yeah, we had a, we've got a few members that have been rocking up to some of our sessions. Um, so we usually do it on um, either myself, my hosted, or one of the other members who's also keen on doing ergo sessions. Um, just keen on uh, just... Uh, annihilating themselves every Thursday night. Um, I was few afterwards, but <laughs> that's the whole point of it. Um, yeah, so we usually do some interval sessions with some breaks in between. And usually they last up to about an hour or so, with some warm-ups and warm-downs periods. Um, as Chris mentioned just before, obviously you're waiting for hopefully everything to die down, hopefully within the next month and, or month and a half. Um, I guess, uh, how is it going to be approaching like once everything sort of opens up and sort of goes back to some normality? Well, as Kim mentioned, we want to continue doing the ergo sessions that, that Kim is running. And, you know, obviously we're aiming to do that face to face. So we'll still want to have some sort of ergo sort of session, but, you know, you just want to have that interaction again, face to face. And we'll, you know, we'll start up our club training sessions, our weekly rides, um, we had some really good numbers uh, pre-lockdown and, um, you know, the numbers were growing from week to week and we had, you know, people coming back and, um, you know, yeah, it was a really good, like, social group. So we're hoping to continue those and, you know, maybe, you know, start some other sessions, um, yeah, depending on what restrictions will, you know, limit us to, but, yeah. Yeah, we've got things to look forward to. Uh, this week we finally got uh, that two orders of our club kit, which um, Ryan can fill you in a bit more on about. Uh, also, I'd like to, while we're doing the interview, so a big shout out to Victorian Government, the Sport and Rec. Uh, they've got another funding grant thing at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to see if we're um, for it, but uh, we, we applied for it last year and it was great because it really helps with some of those administrative stuff that people don't tell you about when you're running a club. And they also gave us a top up without even going through the process again in June of $1,000. And when it's a little club, those amounts of money make a hell of a difference to community sport. And um, yeah, thank you to the state government for doing that. But also if anyone else is watching this and they're running a community sport thing, have a look at uh, Victorian Government Sport and Rec because they do have another funding round out at the moment and see if uh, it's applicable to your club. So Chris just mentioned for about the new kit that's coming out. Ryan, tell us a bit about that. Mm. Yeah, so we've just had a, a massive order of, of new club kit that's um, you know just arrived and we're ready to distribute it all. Um, so we're just looking to see, you know, more members, you know, wearing our, our kit and, you know, being proud to support the club, whether that's, you know, recreationally or, you know, through racing or socially, you know, any aspect of the club, you know, anyone that wears kit, you know, it's just a little family, you know, a little community. So, so Dr. Craig Fry, um, he was involved early on the formation of our club, um, from the Save the Velodrome campaign. Um, so he organised a ride, a few different other riders. I think Dave McKenzie was on that ride. Um, Drew Ginn was on that ride as well. Yeah, Drew Ginn, Ginn. yep. Um, and then a few other um, household cycling names were on that ride. It was a pretty select group and it was really hot yeah. when they did it. So it's really worth looking yeah. up the um, reenactment they did. But it was really lovely of um, Craig 
to wear the club kit because if you've seen it, it's a kind of like an amalgam of several club uh, designs going back to, oh, Kim, you and Ryan yeah, and David. Like yeah. Early 19, um, early 20th century. Yep. It was around then. Um, so we've like, we recreated the old club um, kit with different um, club emblems and logos on, on them. So here, our club really takes pride in its history. Obviously, once we're out of lockdown, um, hopefully it's very soon, sooner rather than later. Have you like got any like interest from, I guess, outside, in, especially in the Greater Danong area or the Monash area, even mm. um, to uh, you know get get on the bike and um, be involved at the club? Yeah, about the social rides. So um, we usually do you know alternating routes. So we have like a local loop. Um, and then we have sometimes a, a bigger loop uh, it could be beach road or, um, you know, somewhere of a greater distance. Um, and it's always a no drop bunch ride. So it doesn't matter what ability or kind of bike you have. Um, you know, we accept everyone and, um, you know, we like to keep together and, you know, uh, yeah, be as social as we can and um, include everyone. Um, Kim, do you have any more to say about the, the social rides or? Yeah, no. It's a really nice bunch of guys that um, usually turn up to our rides. Um, we ho we're hoping that women also turn up to a ride in the future as yeah, well. So it's not all about just um, guys involved in the club. Um, yeah, it's overall we stop for like coffee as well, maybe halfway through the ride after some big kills. Uh, recently, we were gonna, or we had, um, we were gonna get involved with the the Dandenong show. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, the Daniel Nong show got cancelled again uh, for the second year running, um, or second year in a row. So uh, we'll have to try and get back into that next year and, um, you know, support the local community uh, with as much as we can offer through the club. So, um, yeah, it was a bit of a shame that, that it got cancelled because um, Adrian, our, our sponsor, had done a lot of work to, to get us into there and, um, and, you know, give them something to offer. Because we were planning to have a lot, what was going to be an exhibition of, you know, bikes and the like, and really open it up for people. But look, we're going to keep on doing that and um, it'll it'll happen next year. We'll... Yeah, and we hope it will stimulate <laughs> yeah. some more interest in the club as well and mm. some more members. Because unfortunately this week was supposed to be, this weekend I think, was supposed to be around the bay, wasn't it? And it's not happening, and that's another thing that yes. a lot of clubs and other, a lot of other um, recreational riders will be kind of. Mm, uh, it's got a lot, a lot of rescheduling. You know, we're looking at this weekend and in international cycling. We've got the Paris Roubaix, and when, when was that ever held in October? So it's just a thing of um, being flexible, and and also with the club just um, persevering. Uh, we. We created the club at a pretty odd time and ever since has been odd. And I think if we can get through of that, I think the club's got a pretty long history ahead of it. I think you actually might have just mentioned it. Oh, Monty mentioned about sponsors a moment ago, uh, obviously trying to get this one up and running for, uh, at the Dan Ong show. Tell us how important has your sponsors been um, throughout this whole 10 months? Oh, um, invaluable. Adrian... He runs, um, is it Savio Projects, if I've got the projects yeah, correctly? Like yeah, and he does a lot of um, builds and stuff for the NGV and a lot of, uh, sort of that really involved high-end carpentry sort of stuff. And Adrian's been absolutely invaluable to have on board a club sponsor. Just a sponsor as well. He's someone that also joins our group rides as well, social mm. rides and comes along sometimes to watch the races as well. So he's very much in, um, passionate about cycling. Just good to have him in a sponsor. Yeah, that's that's very true. He, um, you know, he doesn't just, just do the sponsor part. He's actually a, a big part of the club. Um, mm. He's uh, he's on the committee and he, he always helps out when he can. Um, you know, he does things on the side for the club. It's not just about, you know, the Savio Projects part coming into the club. It's about, you know, him doing stuff for the club, you know, as, as a whole. So, um, yeah, he's more than just a sponsor. He's, um, he's a club member. So, mm. yeah. 
Do we got to quickly mention about what Kai's up to? One of our members is doing the um, tour to kids. Who, who's across that one? What Kai's up to? Yeah, so Kai, yesterday he recently he just completed the tour to kids. So um, he raised it was like nine hundred dollars or more. Um, we're riding over a thousand kilometers in September, so all throughout the lockdown period, he's been uh, just tapping away on his bike and really doing a, a big effort just to raise awareness. And everyone's seen the amount of work he's put in, and yeah, I chipped in a few dollars to his campaign as well. But everyone that should get involved in cycling once we're out of lockdown, hopefully in the next month or so. Uh, what would be your advice to people that should uh, get back on the bike uh, um, and obviously get involved at the club down there, um, no part dead and all? Yeah, come on our social rides. Um, so head on our socials um, on Instagram or Strava and Facebook and when we get our um, ride calendars up, um, yeah, just pop along to the social rides and meet some people and bring your friends as well and, um, yeah. Just get involved. Yep. Yeah, and if you're not sure whether you, you think you're ready for it, you know, you can always contact us. We have, you know, people contact us from that, you know, aren't really part of a cycling community that want to get involved and they ask how to get how to go about it. And we, you know, we try and point everyone in the right direction. So if you're not sure, you can always uh, contact us. Yep. So our club's quite new as well. So we're really developing as a club. So we're very um, open to any ideas or suggestions to how to improve our rides or the club itself because we're always looking for feedback as a new club in the area and especially as a cycling club because in there as you know there's not many cycling clubs it's just um in a lot of ball sports in usual mm. you know, soccer cricket and cycling is a point of difference in the area so very anyone much that, so anyone that pretty much rode their bikes during lockdown would probably be happy to join our clubs and join our committee as well or be part of the um uh, our meeting groups our riding groups and our social groups yeah that's a really good point to raise there kim because it's not just like you know we're a competitive cycling club we are mainly with an emphasis on track and the, and the social rides but if there's stuff happening in the area um to do with cycling conditions yeah give it contact us see what we can do or put you in contact because you know we we're kind of like you know f um, still advocating down here for you know better cycling conditions and getting a new velodrome at some point in the next um generation <laughs> but uh it'd be great to um don't, don't be put off by oh it's a club where we really do have a really open um and friendly kind of you know outlook on cycling so especially with you know with a massive uptake of like 200 percent of people riding on shed paths around melbourne over the the various lockdowns um we're all ears so get in contact with us well all for you thank you so much for giving up your time to join us and providing us with an update of how everything's going down at the no part down on cycling club and uh hopefully uh for the mm. final time, I don't have to uh, do one of these <laughs> Zoom uh, <laughs> interviews uh, with the club. Uh, obviously, that hopefully this is the last lockdown we're ever going to be in. Um, so, uh, and uh, hopefully uh, next time I'll be uh, hopefully coming out to one of your uh, social events, or oh, sorry, social rides, um, and uh, hopefully uh, get to see how it's, how it's all gone uh, since we last, or obviously since um, this, this interview, hopefully. Great. Thank you, yeah, Will. Thanks, Absolutely. Will. Thank you thanks for your time. Much. No worries. And, of course, uh, that is uh, the president and the vice presidents uh, of the No Part Denong uh, Cycling Club. Of course, if you want to get involved uh, with, of uh, course, the club, uh, the cycling side of things in particular, because we'll put all the details up on our social media as well and how you can get involved. There's more on the Smash Sports Show right after this. Don't go away here on the 10th year celebration.